tonight, police record a double homicide over the weekend. The Prime Minister and the opposition leader join forces to fight COVID-19 and Prime Minister Alan Shastney gets set to address the nation in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. All this and more coming up in tonight's broadcast. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Jacob. Good evening. It is Monday, the 16th of March, 2020. Welcome to the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. We're on Flow Channel 117. The broadcast is also being simulcast on KISS FM Radio, on our mobile app, and the Caribbean Hot 7 Facebook page. I'm Rochelle Gonzalez, standing in for lovely Saint Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. The lull in crime in St. Lucia has reawakened following a double homicide in Mark Bexar over the weekend. Out of the deceased is a 78-year-old male. Public relations officer of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Corporal Ann Joseph, gave the details to one of our Hot 7 News teams. About 9.50 p.m. on Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, officers attached to the Criminal Investigations Department in Castries responded to a report of a shooting at Mark Bexor. We are able to confirm that two individuals have been pronounced dead following that incident, 37-year-old Mosiah Sulal of Mark Bexor, and also Joseph Nicholas, a 78-year-old resident of Mark Bexor, have both been pronounced dead by medical practitioners. Investigations into the circumstances surrounding the death are ongoing, no one is currently in custody in relation to this incident. Sunday's shooting brings the total number of homicides for the year so far to 12. A family in Mark Bexor is grieving the loss of two family members in one night, whilst another is in critical condition at the hospital. Family members and close friends tried to put on brave faces in an attempt to recount what transpired and eventually led to the deaths of 37-year-old Mosiah Sulal and 78-year-old Joseph Nicholas. I am standing where Nicholas Joseph took his last breaths at approximately 1 a.m. this morning. Behind me, we could see a huge pool of blood as well as shell casings. We came to Mark to speak with the family and to get to know what transpired and how they are holding up. We spoke with Jules Cherry, a resident of Mark, who relayed to us his relation to the victim. Right now, my son is here, my son is here, Mark. I'm living here, my Madame, ça, il juste pas maman, moi, mais il n'y a pas de chou, il n'y a pas de chou qui a bandé dans lui. Il n'y a pas de là, c'est Ishley. Et monsieur, c'est un petit bug. Il n'y a pas de chou, il n'y a pas de chou, il n'y a tout le monde. Le bug là qui chou, il était son frère pour lui, mais c'est n'est pas. N'importe ça, il n'y a pas de chou, il n'y a pas de chou. Tout le monde m'a dit qu'il tournait contre monsieur, mais c'est venu, il tournait contre ce bug là. Cherry also gave us some insight as to what may have caused the death of Mosiah Sulal. Saki moa again, two kabut, ek bugla li, vole kabut bugla. So le vole kabut la, mama yi ali, yi report by papa yi, yi di papa yi konha pou, di ti bwela pou, mene kabut, ti bwela vie bali. Yi di wel, mama yi di konha so, ok, kite kabut la bali, nou pa afe wa, whatever, whatever. So yi vini, yi di mam, mwen kite zafe kabut sa bali. Deux semaines qui passent, Bougla vini, il pète deux gonchots. De antigène et qu'on l'a dit Bougla. Police vini, yo investigue, yo dit qu'il vie et qu'il va jamais vie. Yo soué, all of a sudden Bougla just a pied et qu'il vini à gonni. Il just commence à faire boulet, il shoot deux bougons les sept là là. Moussaïa Soulal et puis Brad Makonet Titli. Yo mené à l'hôpital, le mené à l'hôpital, ouais l'hôpital. Police allé, il vit avec M. Avini, fait mes chopes. Oui, M. Avini a monté les chopes là, monté Kaili à Kabani. Il vit des deux et il shoot les deux. We spoke to the niece of the deceased who had placed the call to the criminal investigations department. She, however, did not want to be identified. I called one, two, three, four times and I called again twice. And then they said they kept saying they're responding, they're responding, but I'm not sure what time they got here. But when they got here, they, the man was already dead. If the police had responded right away, then it could have been it could have been avoided. I'm reporting from Mark, where these two homicides have brought St. Lucia's murder rate up to 12. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonza. In other news. 
news, the government of St. Lucia and the leader of the opposition, St. Lucia Labour Party, have agreed to put their differences aside to put up a united front against the spread of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. During a National Emergency Management Advisory Committee meeting on Monday morning, the two leaders vowed to work together to combat the potentially deadly virus rather than to politicize it. Opposition leader Philip J. Pierce said his party is ready and willing to help out where they can. Let me inform you that our party stands ready to support all meaningful efforts to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus in St. Lucia. We will do whatever is in our power, mobilize all our networks to ensure that this deadly disease does not spread and does not get uncontrollable in our country. We recommend that the government establish a COVID special task force, which should include all government agencies, the opposition, the civil society, churches, health, and, and professional bodies. Prime Minister Alan Chastney echoed Pierre's sentiments, saying with such a crisis at hand, there is no place for politics. And some people have used it that we have to go to war with the virus. I'm saying to you that we need to act with a sense of urgency, and this is why my government has chosen to allow the CMO and her team to take the lead. And that we want to make sure exactly what the leader of the opposition has indicated, that politics plays no part in what we're doing. But it's important that all of us protect and uphold the word of the CMO. And that we cannot leave this room and automatically start second guess guessing what is coming out of the, the CMO. I, I assure you that my government is playing no politics. The PM went on to call for St. Lucians to come together and work in unison in order to keep the virus contained and to minimize the damage it is threatening to cause. I want to say to all St. Lucians that we all have a very important part to be able to play right now. The war is to make sure the virus doesn't spread. And so we're, we are depending on all of you to change those behaviors that a word that needs to become commonplace is rationing. I'm not hearing that word. It's almost like people are expecting that exactly what their lifestyle was yesterday is what that lifestyle needs to be over the next couple of months. That is not realistic. And if in fact we are going to be our brother's keepers, it means that we all have to share. So this idea of people rushing to the grocery stores to go and buy out stuff, that mechanisms will be put in place in order to make sure that we have adequate supplies. And that, but there has to be rationing. The PM said in the end, St. Lucians must brace themselves for the worst. Still on the topic, Prime Minister Alan Chastney will address the nation tonight, Monday, March 16th, at 8 p.m. on the COVID-19 crisis and the national response. The Prime Minister's address this evening follows a series of meetings and consultations with the private sector, various organizations, stakeholders, and a meeting of the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee, NEMAC, as the government of St. Lucia continues continues to strengthen local capacities and the overall response to this global threat. The address will be carried via the national television network, NTN, and simultaneously by local stations. The broadcast will also be available online via the Government of St. Lucia's Facebook page, as well as their YouTube page, and it will also be available on the Office of the Prime Minister's Facebook page. Still to come in the broadcast, the Prime Minister explains the travel restrictions in detail. The Chamber of Commerce prepares for challenging times ahead and the government is being asked to remember the disabled when making plans to combat COVID-19. All this and more coming up after the break.